wherever you are, whenever you are. It's the pod of many things. We are two days into 2021 and I'm hoping that it treats you a lot better than 2020. Happy New Year, everybody. It's me, Addison, your favourite friendly furbolg. And today we're going to do the D&D tag started by Ginny D and Mark Humes of High Rollers. They released this yesterday, did a collab on both channels. And they're encouraging people to take the questions that they had uh, and asked each other and do them on their own uh, channels. Uh, Leon's going to do his own version of this and I'm going to nominate a couple of people. I know that a few people are already doing it. Um, but hopefully we can get this going. Uh, tags used to be fun to watch on like old school YouTube and things like uh, Instagram and I think it was Tumblr. Tumblr used to do tags as well. But they used to be fun. So I think this is a really cool thing to get behind and look at. So without further ado, let's get into the questions. There's 15 of them. And hopefully this won't take too long. I'm hoping for about a minute a question at most. Um, so let's have a look. And if it looks like I'm looking, not looking down the camera, it's because I've got the uh, questions on my second monitor. So let's have a look. So question one. What was your first D and D character? So we talked about this on the Pod of Many Things. I think this was episode one when we talked about our firsts, and mine was a open hand monk called Jiong, who was a shameless self insert of myself. Who went because I love martial arts movies and stuff, and I've always loved monks. So I was just like, you know what, I'm going to play this guy, and he's basically going to be a mixture between me and Ang from the Last Avatar. Avatar The Last Airbender, sorry, and uh, just, uh, he's going to be like this goofy, not well versed in the world uh, monk, but somehow has like lots of wisdom that he's learnt from other people to give, um, and yeah, he was just really funny, he was, uh, he was like the, he was almost seen as like the innocent baby of the party, it was really funny, uh, how like a lot of the characters like seem to want to protect him, and how like... Uh, earnest he was in the fact that these people even though I've not known them for very long are my friends and I'm going to protect them it was, he was the cutest thing and I loved him that's why his name was uh, Xiong which I don't know if it's correct but is Chinese for bear so that's the uh, story behind my first D&D character that I remember playing there was um, some times when I played D&D like as a tiny kid uh, in like junior school when you don't actually play properly but I can't remember what the character was I think it was just what the mini was um, question 2 which D&D class is your least favourite to play or do you not want to play so um, you could take an easy swipe at the PHB ranger here and just be like oh, that is rubbish and knock it out of the park and most people will agree with you even with some of the Tasha's stuff um, it's still not my my uh, favourite but I think actually the one that is my least favourite to play is actually just Bog Standard Fighter like I'm Bog Standard Fighter is kind of I'm there I'm a bit like eh, this is okay I always have to do something with the fighter to make it a bit more fun so i'll choose like a strange race so i might be a changeling fighter or uh, the last time i played fighter i was a shifter because of the fact i was just a bit like uh, um fighters are a bit boring I, 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 yeah they're not my cup of tea i want to either be doing cool cinematic dope shit like a monk or i want to have like a crusade like a paladin or even the ranger has like this cool thing of like I'm the loner in the woods who watches over like the the borders of society and stuff like that um, from animals and like things that you don't know. Um, those things are pretty cool. Whereas I feel like the fight is kind of boring, and every time they've tried to like make the fight interesting, and this is really apparent in Tasha's Cauldron of everything, it's just walls of text. It's just like. Ugh, bleh. Um, it just makes me look like looking at it makes me feel a bit ill. So yeah, fighter is probably my least favorite to play. Um, question number three is what D and D spell would you most want to have in real life? Now, 
there's some really cool ones out there. I think Ginny's D's response of uh, the Magnificent Mansion is is really cool. Um, it's a really great idea, um, considering uh, the fact that you'd have this house that you can just take with you everywhere. Um, uh, I think that's really cool. Um, I quite like the idea of like modify memory uh, as one. And I wouldn't use it to do like uh, sinister things, but maybe um, if I uh, made like a massive screw up in front of a class or something, I could cast modify memory on them to make them forget that five seconds of like um, something. Uh, but that seems a bit bad. I don't know. Uh, because there's so many good spells. Gift of the Gab's really good. You can like make people, you can like retract what you said and re say it in a better way and everybody thinks that's what you said um there's also uh that uh, i don't know what it's called but there's one way you can like basically do like a magician's like palm slide but it actually goes into a uh, a pocket dimension instead of, like um is it wrist flick or something but you can like there's there's so many good spells but i think i'd agree with Ginny. i'd take the i take the magnificent mansion i'd cart that around with me Mate, there's even Polymorph. Polymorph would be sick. You could, like, transform into anything. And just go where you want to go. Like, imagine being able to just turn into an eagle for an hour. Bearing in mind how fast those things can go. You could pretty much never have to pay for transport ever again. Um, so, yeah. That's pretty sick. Um, I would go with the mansion, though. Because free, free place to stay. And you, it's always what you want. And it's always great food. And there's servants and all sorts. Um, what's your favourite D and D monster? Now I need to have a quick look at this because I always get this wrong. But my favourite D and D monster is, I think, is called a Corred. Let me just check. Yeah, a Corred. It's from uh, Volo's Guide to Monsters. It's on page one hundred and sixty-eight. I'll show you the show you the little dude because he does have art because it's like one of my favourite things in the world uh, 178 where is it I've gone past yeah I have there we go so it's uh, this little dude here he is a small fey creature and they're like they like pretend to be rocks and they have like hair that's like unbreakable and they make like little lasso traps out of it and stuff they're just really funny um i made one as an npc once and basically he was just the doorstop of the inn that the adventurers worked for or the guild that the adventurers worked for um they found him in a bank vault and they convinced him that they would feed him gold because they eat i think they eat um rocks and stuff um and uh, they, yeah, it, it, he was just great. And they just, they were like, oh, we'll feed you all you want. Just be the doorstop of this guild. And so he was. And they're just great because they've got uh, the while on the ground. And they, they have this really cool thing where while on the ground, the Corrid deals two extra dice of damage with any weapon attack, including its attack. So it's like, it can command its head. It's just a really cool, stupid little monster that I think is just really funny and has the potential to like, can you imagine if all your party got caught by the hair of this Corred and ended up having to like work for it for a little bit to like, oh, uh, my burrow's been invaded by something. That would be sick. So yeah, Correds are my favourite monster ever. I need to find more excuses to use them. Number five, what's your favourite NPC slash villain that you've ever encountered slash created? Um, this one's pretty hard. Um... There's a group of NPCs that I really liked that I made. It's not a D and D game, but it was from Mutants and Masterminds, and there was like this bunch of kids. It was set in like the X Men universe, and basically it was a bunch of like kids who had been in this orphanage and had their like mutant powers like uh, uh, forced to bloom like before puberty, in the hopes that puberty would reveal a second uh, mutation. A bit like how Emma Frost is both telepathic and can turn into diamond, or that um, 
certain mutants have seem to have like two powers um and i quite liked them they were fun because there were so many of them they all had different powers and like they they like took over the school and they're all like none of them are above 12 and they're all like we own this place now and everybody's like you can't do that and they're like no we can and we will um that was pretty fun but i think in terms of D, &D i think the my favorite uh npc is is based on one of my characters because i i'm a forever dm i don't really get to play and it's found and spud like the furbolg monk and the baby furbolg that he carries around with him and they the the party meets them at various stages to the point where in my current campaign it's just like a couple of years on from well 10 years on from thing from the uh, original campaign where they appeared spud's now a grown up and uh he's a wild magic sorcerer so even as a baby he was a wild magic sorcerer at quite a high level and <laughs> he kept uh he kept uh doing some crazy stuff and uh making it so the the party and found were preoccupied rather than saving the world that they were supposed to be doing like he'd fund a step in the middle of a library and destroy loads of stuff he'd like duplicate himself uh he uh, would age himself randomly by accident it was great uh the party came in and he was still technically a baby and he'd like aged himself up to like 10 years 15 years he was like 18 and they like walked in he was just in the kitchen cooking and then they were like oh we're gonna deal with that problem later that was great um has one of your characters ever died and what killed them um i've never had like a perma death but the one time where my cat has like died was in leon's campaign <laughs> his curse of Strahd campaign and his random encounter tables this is why i hate random encounter tables because they're not fair um and we had like a ton of dire wolves we were like worn out and we just got massacred like quite badly it was like eight dire wolves and we were only like level free so it was like yeah i was running out of spells uh this is the infamous curse of strad campaign where uh i, I shot someone where i shouldn't have because yeah just it was just a bad time all around okay so bolly died but then they they had a weird thing where this hag came and like revived them which was weird so yeah um I don't know what that was. Leon's never went into it. And I don't really want to go into it with it because he might get upset with me again when I'm like, oh yeah. Um, question seven is what's your best natural 20 story? I think it was a natural 20. But um, one of my players killed a... cloud giant i'm gonna say cloud storm giant killed a storm giant with a magic stone uh finished him off there he was he actually still had like quite a lot of hp left for for like a magic stone he shouldn't have they shouldn't have been able to kill him and then like in the true david and goliath style she like threw this magic stone critted it and then i think she max damaged all the dice um and there's plenty of others where i think there was one where <laughs> somebody oh was that a natural one that and that's the next question anyway so we'll, we'll do this story as well what's the best natural one story so i set up this like big boss on these like rickety rickety um uh gang planks and catwalks around this like crystal thing and so um, I think there was a nat one on the integrity check or like the, the, the keeping together check of the thing and the, the boss plummeted to its doom and died um, yeah <laughs> like, like I didn't realise that um, it had taken so much damage and then when it fell it fell like a, a hell of a long way hit the bottom and died and my wife who was playing at the time just got up and was like no like I was like uh, I can stop it if you want and she was like no that's how it died so she wasn't happy that it died that way but she also didn't want to change it it was it was pretty funny 
Um, but I was also like devastated because I was like, what? My boss died in the most stupid, pathetic way. Like, um, what's the highest level you've ever played a character to? Um, personally? Did we get to eight? I think we got to eight. We got to level eight uh, is the highest. Because I remember taking two ability score increases. Oh, no, tell a lie. One of my characters got leveled up to 12 because he prayed to a god. And it was like a, it was like their Alamo moment. Oh, yeah, Kindling died. Should have used that my, like for the story. Yeah, my one of my characters died and was uh, assimilated into a construct race and became like a big bad um because i was stupid but yeah he got to like level 12 that was pretty fun um i as a as a dm i'm quite liberal with milestones because i want to get to like those higher levels and do cool stuff like and save the world and everything like is that i because i feel like it gets boring if all you're doing is like defeat these bandits here and kill these goblins here i want them to be like yo like You've got now travel the planes now because you've got this big massive conspiracy to solve and stuff like that. I want to do that cool stuff. I want to do the movie stuff and make my players feel like, oh yeah, we're epic and we can do this, this and that. Whereas, like, I feel as if it can get really boring if you, um, they're just milling about killing like goblins for a gold a goblin if you can prove it or whatever. Um, number 10 what's your favourite magical item my favourite magical item was one that I never ever thought would be my favourite but um, it's like one of the statues like there's like three goat statues <laughs> and you can you can like one of them becomes like a battle goat it's like the craziest thing because like you can like take its horns off and like the horn becomes a lance or something like that it is insane. It is the funniest thing. So, yeah, because um, one time I put them in just a, like a throwaway thing. I made it so that the the specialism of this magic shop was these statues, these animal statues. I think they bought the dog. But, like, there was a good 20-minute debate on whether they should get battle goats. And there was, like, multiple sets of these free uh, goat statue things. I'm going to try and find it quickly. Um, but yeah, it was it was like the it was like the funniest thing I'd ever seen when they when they were and it's just the thought of it now makes me giggle and it makes me smile. Uh, question number eleven: If you had an IRL alignment, what would it be? Um, I'm quite pragmatic and I'm quite like if there's a rule, I want it to be there for a reason. So I think I'd be neutral, law, not neutral good, because sometimes if I don't see the point in a rule, I won't follow it. But I, I know that I'm like on the cusp of like neutral uh, good and the lawful good because of the fact that I I need certain stuff to be done in a certain way, and I need things to follow rules and stuff like that. Otherwise, I get like uh, like ASD like ah like. <laughs> This isn't okay, like, at the moment with how things are going in the UK with schools and I work in schools, I'm just like, I have no, like, uh, like it's it's really messing with me. So I, I'm probably on the cusp of lawful good and neutral good because um, I need things to be in order, but I also think that unneeded bureaucracy is unneeded bureaucracy, if that makes sense. Um, question number 12 is if you had to 12... Yeah. If you had to date one of your characters, which one would you pick? Um, most of my characters are apparently obnoxious. This is what my wife tells me and a couple of people have told me is that I make really, really obnoxious characters. Um, so, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think it would either be found the, the Furbolg who became an NPC because of the fact that he's he's just so sweet and, and so so dumb. Like... <laughs> I want to protect him or or Jiong for the same sort of reasons that he's like oddly charming um like and just not very good with people um it, but he's fun whereas like 
for example, my my fire genasi war mage kindling had the the problem that he thought he was the smartest person in the room, and it was like, I'll admit it was like me dialed up to like thirty, like like I I kind of do that sometimes, but like he just genuinely thought he was clever and like he was the best thing since sliced bread, which is yeah. Um, my shifter fighter Orson, uh. Who, he was a bit just a bit bland like he was more there to facilitate my wife's character and uh, any other characters I've had have just been a bit eh, like uh, Adarian Daradan the, the Eladrin Druid was a bit he was a bit of a drunk and he, well, that was his whole thing is that he was from the court of Bacchus um in the Feywild, so he, he just drank all the time, so I can't, and he was a bit of a philand, philanderer, um, wouldn't feel secure, so yeah, I, I would want somebody like Found or Xiong, who I knew would be loyal, but would also be a good time. Um, question number 13, is there a character that you want to play, but haven't had the chance to play yet? Um... I really want to get a go at the Astral Monk from Tashes. That's like my big thing at the minute. And I can't get over it. Like I, I need to play that. But I think I've also not had the opportunity to play... Um, I've got a, a, a rogue who I use as, a, as an NPC a lot of the time who I really want to play. His name's Freedom Walker and he's the captain of a ship called the Flying Leviathan. And I I love him. He uh, if actually I changed my answer to the last question. Um, I would date free because of the fact that he would just be so fun and so like he's such a bad boy. Like and he knows everything, but he's not like he's not like really clever. He's just well connected, and he's like there, like, uh, and he can like read thoughts and stuff like that. Free, I've always wanted to play free as like an actual character. And I have a story where basically he moored up the fire in the fire for one day, got really drunk on shore, and then it's gone, and he doesn't know where it is. Like <laughs> he's trying to basically kind of like Pirates of the Caribbean esque of like, where's your ship? And he's like, I don't, I don't know, really. I'm trying to find it. Um, so yeah, I really want to play Freedom Walker. Um, question fourteen is: Are you a dice goblin or a dice minimalist? Now. I own a lot of dice. I don't know if that's because there are some that I was like, oh, those are pretty. I need those. Or if I knew that I was always going to probably DM, and especially DM at a school, so I would knew I'd need to give those out and like lend them to people. Obviously not now in the current, current climate. Um, so actually, I always use the same dice at the minute for everything. I've got like a set of dice with like multiple d6s multiple d20s uh and then i use my box machina um d20 set from the first original run with uh geek and sundry so i always use those like really there's a lot there but i'm not really a dice goblin in the terms of like i need dice all the time i've actually got to a point where i think there's only a couple of other sets of dice that i would like um some other crit roll i think i want percy's a dice set from Critical Role, and there's a, a Spirit of Bear dice set from Crit It, and unless they release like a Caduceus Clay dice set um, from Critical Role, I think that would be it. Like I'd be, I'd be fine. I'd be done. That would be fine. Or Molly Mark. Maybe I'm a dice goblin. I'm not sure. I'll come back to you on that one. And then question fifteen. The last question is: What rule or mechanic have you never quite wrapped your brain around? Jumping. What the hell is jumping? Right. There's all these mechanics and stuff that, that say, oh, to jump, you to do a jump, you have to do these things. And a running jump is different from a standing jump, obviously. And there's like this, that and the other. But every time it comes to it, I'm just kind of like, you know what? We're just going to roll an athletics check. And if it works, it works. Because it's so, it's just so much like, well, you must add your, you can jump a number of feet equal to your, um, your, your score, not your modifier. So you can jump 15 feet. 
if you've got this much run up and it's just like by the time you've calculated it you might as well have just went roll an athletics check here's the dc boom like it's um it just seems a bit overblown and complicated like um and people are going to come at me and be like yo it's not that hard it's not that hard um well for me it is so but that's my answer like some people can't get cover i think cover's pretty simple yeah you get a mixed up every now and then like oh you accidentally give the effects of three quarters cover for half cover and all that jazz but actually it's pretty simple um whereas i just jumping because it's not really used that often especially in combat you're a bit like uh yeah no so yeah uh jumping is a mechanic that i've always really struggled with and that's it i think that's all the questions from uh Ginny d's D D tag leon's going to be releasing his own version of this on the pod of many things youtube channel like mine hopefully we try and release them simultaneously and you can comment down below whether you agree with mine or agree with leon's or maybe compare the two and say what you agree with in mine and what you agree with in leon's um i know that ben from the flickering torch is already working on something like this which could be pretty fun um i'm actually really interested to see his answers because he's not really he's already played D &D. he plays a lot of other systems um and there are some people that i'd like to nominate to do this tag before i go so the people i'd like to uh nominate drum rolls please um i would like to nominate uh my friends over the potomac uh podcast i want to see every single one of them do this and see how different they are as, as like a group i think that'd be hilarious as the uh, uh, as i know that they're sometimes they have very different views on things um i like to see uh my friend jordan who you you might see on the flickering torch um gming blaze in the dark red herrings for us uh, check that out by the way that stream's sick and my character is probably the best um and his youtube channel uninformed rpg uh, i think that would be really cool to see him do it and talk about it in terms of his like very little experience um and then i think the last one i'd actually like to see because of the fact that he's played for so long and he's been he's so experienced when we had him on the podcast like it was just like like a deluge of information like he was so good and he'd had so much experience with so many different systems sean connors again from the uh from the stream on the flickering torch uh i don't know if he still has a youtube channel as the outsiders uh 68 i think or whether he would like to do and make a new one or whatever but actually i think that sean's answers to these would be sick and he'd have some like proper stories you'd probably be there for like an hour though because they'd be like that grand and uh awesome he'd be there like we'd need like him in a smoking jacket with one of those bubble pipes as he answered the questions i think but yeah that's everything from me i hope whoever you are wherever you are whenever you are that you are happy you are safe and uh, hopefully you can see some crazy good stuff from us in 2021 from the pod of many things. Peace.